you remember the injury of the children of Daid, who had been a snare and offense unto the people, in that they lay in wait for them in the ways. He shut them up, therefore, in the towers, and encamped against them, destroyed them utterly, and burned the towers of that place with fire and all that were in. Then verse one. Okay, that's all right. He's reading that as as also, you know, it gives you the impression that that's talking about Esau Edom. All right. But that's actually that particular part is talking about uh, a separate uh, set of people. Verse four. Also, he remembered the injury of the children of Bean, who had been a snare and an offense to the people and that they lay in wait for them in the ways. He shut them up. Therefore, in the towers and encamped against them and destroyed them utterly and burned the towers of that place with fire and all that were therein. So that's what happened to the children of Bean. Now, he's going to he's going to say another point. But, you know, it's something, you know, sometimes it ain't what you say it's how you say it. And he read that as if that particular point was talking about Esau, but it was talking about uh, the children of Bean. So not to, you know, leave any uh, gray area there. Okay. 28 says, Hereupon Judas and his hosts turned suddenly by the way of the wilderness unto Bosra. And when he had won the city, he slew all the males at the edge of the sword and took all their spoils and burned the city with fire. Now, of course, the Maccabees, that happened in what? Like the 300s, 200s. So that's pretty much... The city... OK, that don't mean that. So you mean to say every last single Edomite on the face of the earth dealt in that particular city? It said he burned all the mills of that city. OK, when it happened and the Maccabees is written in about 150 B.C., maybe 200 B.C. Now I'm going to read something That's interesting because like I'm thinking. They have been sending. I don't. I don't know if you um accept the entire apocrypha as a uh, doctrine. I know a lot of the um. Yeah. Do you? You gotta explain that. Do you accept the entire apocrypha as doctrine? Now all of a sudden you go to the apocrypha to try to make a point that Esau Edom is done away with, but the apocrypha says otherwise. Lord willing, we're gonna get that scripture. Uh, the camps of the Hebrew Israelites do, but if this is when, um. The Esau and Edom was pretty much overthrown and destroyed. And That's not when. Books a lot. How could they not see those passages and put them, you know, two and two together and accept that Edom's no longer exist? Well, once again, that is because, and I've said this before, and, and you have to keep this in mind, because the devil is no longer these people's enemy. The devil is our enemy. The devil the devil means deceiver. Okay, So-called white man a deceiver. Of the Maccabees, that all the, Israel, uh, all the Edomites were destroyed, right? So my question is this: Where did the Herodian dynasty come from? Yeah, and the apostle and the apostle made a point. Just because it said uh, Esau Edom, that don't mean that the Greeks is not Esau Edom. Because who was who was uh, they who was they battling? Who was uh, uh, Judas uh, Maccabees going against? Going against the Greeks. Just because it don't just because it says Greek. The Greeks, that don't mean that they weren't Edomites. When they say the Greeks in that, in that, in that scripture, when you, re, when you read the Maccabees, the Greeks, they're Edomites. All right? But because you got so-called black, Latino, and Native American men saying it, you people don't want to hear it. You only listen to what your daddy say. So let's go, uh, your father, the devil, John 8 and 44. Now let's see what your father, the devil, have to say about Esau, Edom. Okay? This father's manifesto.net, Jews are Esau. Uh, uh, I'll read A. From then on, Edomites constituted a part of the Jewish people. Yes. The so called Jewish people come from Amalek, one of the tribes of Esau, the Edomites. Herod being one of their descendants. Like the apostle said, where did the Herodian dynasty come from? The Standard Jewish Encyclopedia, 1966. Double Day and Company Eat Garden City, New York, page 592. And uh, then, then so, oh, you then say, oh, you got that off the Internet. Ah. All right, well, the, the Internet has information. And furthermore, if you go to Elder Malcolm's page, he, got, he has those old dictionaries. And, and, and I heard that brought out, and he brought that out. 
Okay? What else does it say? Why does the Jewish Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia mention that Edom is in modern Jewry? So Edom exists. That is their own writings. Not the clan. Why the KKK reference? And where's your proof? Edom is in modern Jewry, the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, volume 5, page 41. And I believe, I, I'm, if I may be mistaken, I believe that's the dictionary that Elder Malcolm had where this came out. Uh, the non-Israelite Edomites, see they're not Israelites, became a section of the Jewish people. Edom, Encyclopedia Judaica, Jerusalem, Israel, Encyclopedia Judea Company, 1971, volume 6, page 378. Okay, now let's go to something else. Who is Esau Edom? Who is Esau Edom is a book, the life history, genealogy, prophecy, predestination, and modern identity of the biblical Esau, modern identity, meaning they exist today, book by Charles A. Wiseman. Okay. Charles A. Wiseman, the so-called white man. And now is what we're saying true? Since the so-called white man backs this up, how much does this book cost? Hmm. Shopping. Oh, $2,389. Hmm. That's what they say. You want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book, right? Now, six to five to six years ago, and because brothers got this book. Yeah, it's true. Brothers got this book and did videos and lessons on this book. OK. And when they got this book years ago, it wasn't this high. It was about under about twenty dollars or less. But because it's important, because there's information in this book, because it's coming out, because there's things in this book that backs up what the Bible says. They want this knowledge hidden from my people. And then they got uh, uh, people such as yourself. So real as so real. You know, to come in, to come and help further their cause of keeping our people dumb. But you don't make sense because in the Apocrypha, and you got to do a lesson on that saying the Apocrypha is canon because the, the guy said it. I don't know if you accept the whole Apocrypha, but, but now you're going to accept that particular passage because you using it to say Esau, Edom is done away with. That's so real. But in that same Apocrypha you read, what did it say? Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 6. It says, uh, oh, no, nine. This is second Ezra six and eight. And he's no second Ezra six and seven. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of, of it that followeth? So when is this this age going to end? And, and, and the next age, because uh, the so-called white man got to be brought down. Before the Israelite come into power, the, the fake Jew says, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the Jewish people say that prop so-called say that prophecy was fulfilled in 1948 when they got the, the Israel, their homeland back. But they supposed to be the children of the Bible, but the Bible directly speaks against that. Why? Because the Bible says when the, the, the true Israelites go back to their homeland, the world will no longer practice war anymore. But since those people that put, and the Bible said the Lord will restore them. It didn't say that a, 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 a bow for a declaration will restore them. All right. Let's get that. Uh, what is that? Is that? Let me paraphrase it real quick. Practice war. Or is it learn war? Well, okay, this is Micah 4. Uh, I'll start at the top. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. The mountain of the Lord is the, the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans established in their homeland, Israel. And to the house of the God of Jacob. See, our, 
uh, oh, so like it, not our, but it says the God of Jacob, not the God of the whole world. Okay. And he will not the God of the Christians. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Verse 3 is the point. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. It's now they're beating their plowshares into swords. All these nations that uh, was once based off uh uh, agriculture and farming, they say, oh, we turn, they turn it from that and getting into the, getting into battling. But when the, when the, when the, uh, when the kingdom is established on earth, it's going to be, it's going to be reversed. They're going to beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Hmm. Okay. So when did that happen? The Bible says that, that when Israel is, is, is restored and established, that is going to happen. So them so-called Jews, they, they are not, that, that doesn't apply to them. Is it true that, uh, uh, yay or nay, don't they finance war? Don't they fund both sides? Don't Israel, pro don't Israel produce some of the uh, top guns? I believe they make the Uzi. That might, that's an Israel, uh, uh, Israel, Israeli 